you want to be able to sculpt amazing and fun faces like this? Then follow along with me in this complete beginner's guide to sculpting in Blender. We'll have you mastering the sculpting tools in no time. If it's your very first time opening Blender, then it's a good idea to check out my complete beginner's guide playlist to get used to the interface if you're struggling with this video at all. Now it's worth mentioning before we start that I'm using a display tablet so I can draw on my screen and it's nice and easy. You can also use a basic graphics tablet like this that doesn't have a screen. It's just a little bit more awkward to use, but still very effective. You can also use a mouse. It's just much easier with a tablet, but you can still get some really good results. The pen that comes with a tablet should have buttons and you'll want to set the first button, button one, to middle mouse button. That way you can easily move around your object. If you have two buttons, then you'll want to set the second one to right click. That's what I use the most, but I hardly use that to be honest. So let's get started making our face. So when you first open Blender, you'll see a screen like this and you've got new file options down the left hand side here. And for most people, they'll start off with a general scene, but I just want to quickly show you that there is a sculpting option as well. Don't follow along with this, but if I open that up, you'll see that you're straight into the sculpting workspace and there's a sphere here that we can start sculpting on. However, I don't recommend that for beginners. So we're going to start with just a general file. I've turned on my shortcut keys down the bottom corner here and I'm in Blender 3.6. Now, one thing that's helpful for you to see what I'm doing is to make my 3D viewport a little bit bigger and I can overtake this timeline at the bottom here. You don't have to follow along with this. It won't make too much difference to you, but I can come down to the bottom corner here where the crosshairs are, click and drag over the other one to just make the viewport a bit bigger. Okay, so a quick reminder of the controls. Middle mouse button is to rotate around your object. And if you have your pen set up, then you should have pen button one set to middle mouse button. That makes it nice and easy. The wheel of your mouse is to zoom in and out. If you're using a pen, you hold down control while pressing pen button one, the middle mouse button on the pen, and you can zoom in and out like this. You can use your numpad to jump to side view and front view and things like that. Or you can use the Cartesian coordinates just here. Just remember that you want the X going across. So that's X to minus X. That helps for symmetry later. And this Y is actually the positive Y, but we have that going away from us in that direction. So going away from us is positive. And this is the side you generally want to be looking at your objects from. And I'll explain why more later. Now holding down shift and middle mouse button is to strafe side to side. Okay, so let's set up for sculpting. I'll start by selecting the cube and deleting it because it's not the best object to sculpt with. I'll press shift A to add and go to the mesh menu. That's the same as the add menu up here. So add and then mesh and an icosphere is probably the best shape to start with. So I'll add one of those. You should have a dialog box at the bottom left here. If I click on that disclosure arrow, I can change the subdivisions so it's nice and high and we've got lots of polygons to sculpt with. So we'll go right up to five. Don't go too far with this because that could crash your machine. So now that we've got to this point, we're ready to start sculpting on our object. So I'll go to the sculpting workspace at the top here. And this should remind you of the starting scene if we went straight into sculpting. But the handy thing is we have the layout workspace that we don't have to add and we can jump back to if we need to add any objects. I'm going to extend out the brushes so we can read the names. So on the side of the brushes here where my cursor changes to the double arrows, I can click and drag and bring out the names so you can easily see which brush I'm using. And we're going to start off with a grab brush. But before I do anything, it's a really good idea to turn on symmetry at the top here. So symmetry in the X, that's why it's important that we're looking at it in terms of the X axis going across this way. And now we can start editing the shape. You've got brush settings down the side here, and you've also got those options up the top here as well. But it is much better to have your hand over the keyboard. The shift key and the control key are the keys you'll be using all the time. So F is to resize your brush, and I can press F, move my cursor side to side, and resize my brush easily. Shift F is to change the strength, but we don't need to worry too much about that at the moment. So I'll press escape on that. And for most brushes, the default strength will be absolutely fine. So let's start sculpting. We're going to create a caricature face and I'll come to the bottom of my sphere here, click and drag and pull that downwards like this. So I've created a shape like that. And from side view, if I click on this X here, that's what it looks like. Now it's pointing forwards a little bit. Maybe I'll bring in a face like this who's got a funny pointed chin. We've got something looking a bit like this. I'll press one on my numpad to go to front view or you can press on the minus Y just here. And I'll bring the shape of the head in a little bit like this. So it slopes down a tiny bit, a little bit closer in at the front than at the back. That's just how heads are. And we've got a really basic starting point. So I'll come back to side view so you can see what that looks like. And you might want to pause the video here and catch up with me. Now you might start to see these polygons stretching slightly. 
We'll exaggerate that effect by pulling out the neck here. So come around to the bottom. You can see I've got those two yellow dots and that's the symmetry. So when they're nice and close together, we know that that's the middle point. And I can get them fairly close here, click and drag and pull down a neck like this. And if I just zoom around, you can see what that looks like. I could only pull it so far, so I'll pull it a bit again and again and move around my object and pull it again and again like this. So you have to move around your object a fair bit with the grab brush to pull it in all the different directions. And we can see that this is very stretched. Now, if you're seeing it even more stretched than I am, then you probably didn't have as many polygons in your icosphere to start with. Don't worry, we'll be able to sort that out in a moment. If you're seeing less stretched than I am, then you probably went up a little bit higher. But we can change the amount of polygons we see and stop this stretching by using the remesh options. The remesh is up the top here, and you can see in this drop down menu here. You can also find that in your brush settings, if I middle mouse button and come down to remesh here, they're exactly the same as up here. The main thing you need to remember here is the voxel size and the actual remesh button. Now the voxel size is the size we're going to make the polygons. And we can easily see that by pressing R on our keyboard. And this is the size that it's going to make the polygons based on the shape we've already made. And about 0.08 looks good. So I'll left click there. And to actually press the remesh button, the shortcut key is Control R. And you can see it's remeshed it and taken away a bit of this stretch. Now it still looks a little bit lumpy, so I'll probably go a little bit lower with my number. So I'll press R again, go a little bit lower to 0 0.07. It can be fairly rough, it doesn't have to be bang on. And Control R, and that's about right for the amount of detail we need at the moment. Now one thing that may help you, if I go up to the overlays here, click on this drop down and turn on statistics, you can see the amount of faces you have in your scene. Now I've got a fairly powerful machine and I can comfortably go above 3 million faces using this technique. For older machines, you want to keep it down to probably around half a million at the most. But you'll find out as you go along and if your workspace starts to lag a bit, then you might want to change your remesh voxel size so it's just a little bit higher. So now's a good time to catch up with me creating the neck and remeshing your shape. Okay, so let's start sculpting a little bit more. So I'll bring out a nose at the front. I'll make my brush a bit smaller. So F to resize the brush, put the points into the middle there so they're together and click and drag outwards. Now that didn't really work for me. So I'll undo that, come further around to the side and make my brush a little bit bigger. Again, points close together, click and drag outwards. That's a bit better. And I'll pull outwards a little bit here and maybe a little bit further with the nose and point it upwards like this. And we've got a funny shaped nose there. I can come around to the front and start pulling this area in and we're slowly starting to get an area for the eye sockets and maybe pull this area in as well. Okay, so there's the start of my nose. In fact, I'll just take the bridge of the nose in a little bit there and that looks a little bit better. And once we've got this point, we see a bit of stretching so we can press Control R to create that remesh again. And we can see a little bit of blockiness there. So perhaps I'll press R again, bring my voxel size down to this time 0.06 and press Control R to remesh. And that's a little bit better. And I think that will help us and give us just that little bit more detail. Now you might be thinking, why am I not just putting it up and going really detailed because my computer can handle it? What's the problem? Well, the general rule is keep as low detail as possible for as long as possible. The reason being, if I come around to the neck just here and I hold down Shift and draw it over the neck, you can see it's smoothing it out and it's doing a nice job of smoothing it out. I can go to other areas, hold down Shift, Holding down shift takes you to the smooth brush, but it's just a quick way of doing it. So hold down shift and I can smooth out that area there, for example. What the smooth brush does, it takes your polygons and kind of evens them out. If I have lots and lots of fine polygons, it makes a big difference to the smooth brush and how much of the shape it moves around. And in the early stages, you want your smooth brush to be quite influential. So you keep the polygons nice and big to start with and the detail as low as possible. And then as we go along, we don't need the smooth brush to move the shape as much, so we can up the detail a bit more. Okay, so you might want to pause the video here and catch up with me creating the nose and just have a little go using the smooth brush, which is holding down shift. So hopefully you've gotten okay with that. Now I'm going to start refining the shape, still using the grab brush. So I'll come around to the side here and pull in an eye in this sort of direction. Bring this area back a little bit as well. Cheekbones up just a touch. I'll zoom out a bit and I'll change the forehead, make my brush nice and big and maybe give him 
a funny sort of shaped head at the back here, bring this area in, and we're starting to get a reasonable looking shape. I think I'd like the mouth area to come in a bit more and the chin to be more sort of curvy like this. And you can just have lots of fun creating a shape yourself. For the eyes, I'm gonna zoom in a bit and just create an area for a sphere to go in. So I'll create a nice rounded eye socket around here, bring the middle back a bit, not the outside here or the nose. So just so it's rounded out like this and perhaps bring them together a bit. We've got this sort of eye socket shape. Now I've made some changes, Control R to do the remesh. So we've got a nice even detail across the mesh. And that's starting to look fairly good. So once again, you might want to pause the video and have a go at setting up a shape that's kind of similar to mine in some way. Don't worry if it's not exactly the same. It really doesn't have to be. It is a caricature, so have some fun. If you're enjoying this tutorial and want to push your sculpting skills even further, then you should try out my sculpting bundle. You get three top selling courses at the incredibly low price of $29. You'll learn everything you need to know to create stunning 3D models from characters to dragons and beasts. You'll also learn the very basics of rigging and animation so you can start to make them move around, walk and run. So why not give it a try today? Let's put some ears in and a little shape for the mouth. So I'll go to the draw brush this time. With the draw brush, I'll bring that size down a bit by pressing F a little bit further and just draw in a round shape for the ears like this. Nice simple way to do some ears. So I've gone about that far and then I'll draw out a little bit further at the back of the ears and then smooth out the front. So hold down shift, smooth out the front. And I kind of got some ears there just by using the draw brush. Give it a little bit more bulk at the top there and around the side here and then control R to remesh again and that's not looking too bad. Now, how do I dig into the shape? Well, if I hold down control, I can use the reverse of the brush and dig into the shape like this. Just smooth out that area there. And we've got some really nice simple ears. So on any brush, you can hold down control and it will do the reverse. So in this case, push inwards rather than pull outwards. Let's just add a little area for the mouth just there. Just a little shape for the moment, about that much. Ready for adding more detail. So now's a good time to pause the video and catch up with me creating your ears and a small area for the lips. Okay, now we're going to start adding more detail, but before we do that, let's bring in some eyeballs. Now you can do this in sculpt mode because we can change the mode of this object to object mode here and then add some eyeballs that way. The problem is we have to set up being able to see our 3D cursor and it's just a little bit awkward. So I'm going to change back to sculpt mode whilst in the sculpting workspace. That's just up here. And to add the spheres, I'm going to go across to layout mode. And you can see my 3D cursor in the middle there. That's particularly helpful. To move the 3D cursor, I move my mouse over an area and press shift right click. So I want to move it to this area where I want my sphere to go. And that's why I set up button two on my pen as right click. I can go to my add menu. So shift A is the shortcut for that or add menu, mesh. And then this time we'll use a UV sphere for the eyes. I'll scale that down. Probably somewhere around here, we'll have fairly small eyes maybe a tiny bit smaller, something like that. It's a good idea to check it in side view. So three to go to side view, that's on your numpad. And then one to go to front view. Might be a little bit close in, somewhere around there. Okay, so I'm going to zoom into the eye. Now you can see the shape of the polygons kind of go to a point up here. And it's a good idea to have that at the front because it just looks a little bit like a pupil. You don't have to do this, but I like to press R, then X and 90 to rotate it around the X axis 90 degrees and press enter and it just looks a little bit more like an eyeball and it makes it a bit easier for setting up my eyelids. Let's just go to side view and make sure we've got it roughly in the right place. And a little bit of space, maybe half the eyeball's distance towards the bridge of the nose there. And that's probably around the correct position. It doesn't matter a great deal because this is a caricature and we can make them look silly. So we're ready to start sculpting our head again. But before we go back to the sculpting workspace, make sure you select the head first and then go back to the sculpting workspace. That way I'm ready to sculpt on the head. I'll just undo that with Control Z. If for any reason you went back to sculpt mode with the eye selected, you can change which object you're sculpting by moving your mouse over the object and pressing Alt Q. Can you see how it flashes red to say well, that's what's selected and that's what you'll be sculpting? So I'll press Alt Q over my head and it might be a good idea to label these objects as well, just so it's clear what I've got selected. We can do that in the outliner I'll just extend that out slightly and I can double click on the icosphere and call that head. And there's the sphere and you can see I've now selected that and you can see it there and I'll double click on that and call it eye. 
Notice it's highlighted red because it's not actually the active object. You can't jump between objects in the outliner when you're in sculpt mode, only in object mode. So just so there's no confusion, I'll click back to the head and you can see that's yellow, but just make sure you've got it highlighted here so you know that you're sculpting on that. And if in any doubt, remember you've got Alt Q to jump back to the head model. So pause the video here and add in the eyes. Okay, so we need to up the detail to put in some eyelids and to add some detail to things like the mouth. So press R and let's go down a bit further now. So 0 0.03, I would say, somewhere around there and control R, see what that looks like. And let's test it out. Now for the moment, I've not got an eyeball the other side. That's okay. We'll just start drawing the eyelid out with the draw brush and I'll pull it out like this. So I'll just keep drawing until I've got some sort of eyelid. Now it's a bit all over the place at the moment, but let's press control R to do a remesh. And remember we've got the smooth brush to smooth it out. So using the draw brush, smooth it out a bit, then remesh to fix the polygons. Do the same at the bottom here. So just keep drawing to pull out an eyelid. This is the nice easy way to do it. Looks a bit strange. Control R, remesh, hold down shift and smooth that out. And we've got really basic eyelids, but we've got no eyeball the other side. We can fix that, but I just wanted to show you what that looks like. So this is what our sculpt ends up looking. We've got the eyelids kind of sticking out from the mesh and we've got a gap for the eyeball like that. What we need to do is copy this eyeball to the other side. So let's quickly go back to layout mode. With the eyeball selected, we could just duplicate it to the other side, but there's a nice easy way to mirror it so we know it's in exactly the right place. We go to the modifiers down here where this spanner or wrench is, add modifier, and the mirror modifier is in the middle of generate. I'll click on that. Now it looks like it's not working because it's actually mirroring around its center point, which is that orange dot just there. We want to use the head shape as the mirror object. So it'll be the center of our head that it will be mirroring along the x-axis. So the x-axis is highlighted here. If we change the mirror object by clicking the picker, choosing the head, you can see now that's the mirror object and the sphere jumps to the other side and we've got some eyeballs. So remember to select the head before going back into the sculpting workspace. I'm going to go into the sculpting workspace anyway without selecting the head and you'll notice I can't sculpt on my head. So we press Alt Q to select the head just in case you forget. Okay, so catch up with me and mirror the eyeball across to the other side. Okay, so we've got a pretty good starting point. Have we got enough detail? Not really, because the eyelids are looking a bit blocky. So we probably want to up that a little bit. But before we up the detail, perhaps we can just start adding a nostril in here, a little bit of shape around there, something like this. And maybe back to the grab brush and resize and just change the shape of things a little bit so we've got a little bit more shape around the head, maybe a little bit around the cheeks. They can possibly go in a little bit here, make him a little bit more sort of gaunt and perhaps a little bit more bulk around here. I think actually I'll go this way and that looks kind of fun. And you can just start playing with the shape a little bit like this. It's looking okay at the moment, I would say. Maybe you need a little bit more bulk at the back of his head just there. Doesn't matter too much that area though. He could have a funny head like this or like this, whatever you decide. I think somewhere around there. I smooth that out a bit by holding down shift and I'll quickly put in some nostrils before adding any more detail. The draw brush again is best for this. So draw brush, brush fairly small, but the size of a nostril and hold down control. So I do a little bit, let go, do a little bit more, let go and just build it up slowly. Hold down shift to smooth out. A Little bit high at the moment, but that's okay. We can fix that. Control R to do a remesh and I might just get the grab brush and pull them down a little bit, just about there. And I sort of feel like some strange flared nostrils might look fun. Something like this anyway. A little bit this direction. This way you have a bit of fun. Probably pull them in a little bit here. Slowly getting there. Okay, so now's a good time to catch up with me adding that little bit of detail in. And remember to have a bit of fun, change the shape around and just play around. Okay, so we need a bit more detail for the lips and to start creasing in some areas. At the moment, I'm on about 26,000 faces, which is quite low. So we can press R to see our voxel size. We can probably go down to 0.1 now. Now we've got the basic shape somewhere around there and control R to remesh. And you can see we've got a lot more detail. And I'll just make my brush a bit smaller and hold down shift. And you can see that it's having a lot less effect. It's smoothing things out nicely, but it's not moving my shape as much, which is exactly what I want. And this is starting to look very nice. Okay, so how do we start drawing that bit of detail? 
The crease brush is really nice for this and it's a bit like a detail brush. I'll start off with the lips. I'll make it nice and small, zoom in a fair bit and start off by doing a bit of a U shape like this and then down a bit like that. So it's an upside down W. And then you can come up if you want a bit of a smile at the end there. So it's pulled that area in like this. Looks a bit strange at the moment, but press Control R to do a remesh just so we've got that basic starting point. And I'll do the same again, a little bit around there, coming around about here, and that's looking good. Now what the crease brush does, it creates this sort of dent, but it also pushes and pulls the topology, the faces together. Now if I hold down Shift for the smooth brush and just lightly smooth out, and it's worth saying that you've automatically got your strength or your pen pressure set up here. So I'm only lightly brushing across the screen. So if I hold down Shift and lightly brush, it will do less than if I hold down shift and brush harder because of that pressure sensitivity. So I lightly press across it to smooth it out a little bit. And we've got a bit of a lip shape there, but it's not great. It needs to be a little bit more rounded. So I'll smooth out this area here and this area here. We want a little bit more definition to the front here. Now I've used the crease brush to dig in. I'll just dig that in a little bit further around here and around here. You can also use the crease brush to kind of pull out a line. So if I hold down control, it will pull outwards. So I'll create a sort of lip shape around here like this. And again, lightly smooth out. And at the base here, about there. So it look kind of funny at the moment and look really strange, but we can easily adapt this shape. I'll also make my brush a little bit bigger and create a sort of one of the fulcrum thing there. So we've got a bit of detail, but it needs a bit of tidying up. I think the grab brush will help us here, come around to the side a bit and start organizing the shape a bit more. So let's grab that area in here, that in there, pull that out and just create more of a lip shape. Generally speaking, the top lip sticks out more than the bottom lip. That's a good rule of thumb. And he's going to have a weird pointy chin like this. I might edit the chin a little bit more. <laughs> Something like that. Maybe coming in a bit here. You can make it all sorts of shapes. And these coming back here in there. It's looking a bit better. Let's get the smooth brush. And that's not looking too bad. I'll just stick them out a little bit more, pouty lips, and then zoom out and see what we've got. We've got some funny small lips there, looks quite good. I'll bring them up a little bit, just for preference, and I think they're looking pretty good. Control R to do a remesh. Now you might find you lose a bit of detail there, but that's okay because we'll come back and add more detail at the end with that area. But before we do that, we need to work on other areas and add detail. Smooth out the nose a little bit. Back to the crease brush for adding that detail. Brush a bit smaller. Tend to go quite small with the crease brush in terms of the size and let's draw that nostril. I can also draw a bit of a line down here for the mouth and use your smooth brush to smooth these areas out. A bit smaller, detail in the nostril there. Reverse crease brush to create some sort of outline of the nostrils here and maybe give them a bit of bulk around here and then smooth out. You can go for quite a stylized look and give it really sort of creased edges like this. Remember to smooth out as well and it makes a bit more stylized. I don't really want to do that at the moment, but that's the sort of thing you can do. I'll just increase that fulcrum bit there, and I'll just go back to the draw brush and dig in a little bit more for the nostrils and smooth out a bit more, and Control R to do the remesh. Again, we'll lose a little bit of detail, that's okay. I'll tidy up a bit with the grab brush. So across the grab brush, tidy up a bit. Again, this all depends on the style you're going for. I like to move around my object a lot, see it from lots of different angles. And I'll just do a few adjustments around the place, tidying up in a kind of rounded area there. Maybe a little bit up and down here, a little bit square at the moment, but that's okay. Zoom out a bit, see what that looks like. It's kind of fun. A bit more rounded at the front. <laughs> sort of ball shaped at the front now. That looks fun. Okay, once again, now's a good time to catch up with me and make those minor adjustments. So we've got a fun looking face. So let's work on the ears next then. So back to our crease brush for the detail. I think we need a bit more definition around the jaw. So I'll dig that in, dig it all the way down to the bottom here and smooth that area out. I'll smooth the neck out a bit as well. Give the neck a bit of definition. A lot of this comes with a bit of experience in terms of where muscles are and anatomy, but just a little bit of detail around there, smooth around the top of the head and the back of the neck. We're certainly starting to get there. And let's dig in to this area here around the ears. You might find you want to use the draw brush here, make it nice and small and dig in that way because you might need a little bit more depth, but you do have to smooth around a lot around that area in order for it to make sense. 
Now I need to dig in here a little bit as well, but I prefer the crease brush really. It's just nice and simple and quick. There we go, a bit of detail around there, a bit of detail around there. Let's create a bit more of a canal for the ears. So hold down control and then smooth out as it comes towards the head here. Control R to do a remesh, just to make sure that we haven't distorted the topology too much or stretched it too much. Smoothing out around the area again and back to the crease brush. And this with the ears, I do like to add a little bit of stylization. So on the inside here, we can hold down control to do the reverse crease, nice and simple like this. I'll smooth out a bit, hold down shift, and on the outside as well like this. Again, smoothing out just here and there. It's a little bit skewed in terms of where it's headed, so grab brush is good for that, and just pull it back into position. A little bit of smoothing. You can give them funny shaped ears at this point, and they're kind of fun. Nice and simple ears. Just do some smoothing around the back here. Okay, let's look at the eyelids and eyeballs. I'll get the grab brush to start with and just move them into position. So about this sort of size and let's start moving them into position. Now, you might find it's difficult to rotate around an area because my camera target, in a sense, where it's pointing is kind of behind the eye. So it's rotating behind the eye. If I hold down Alt and middle click, that sets it to wherever I point to. And that's really helpful. So I can now zoom in on the eye. It helps to come around to the side and pull the mesh out where needed from there and then pull it up from the front here. It's probably a bit too much. In fact, let's zoom out and have a look. No, I'm going too high there. I want to bring this down. Let's say this is the pupil and this is the iris. The top eyelid overlaps the iris and sometimes, depending on how wide their eyes are, can just touch the top of the pupil. That looks usually about right. I'll just pull this area out a little bit and this area down and smooth out and zoom out. So it looks a little bit tired at the moment, but if I pull this bottom one down a little bit more, and just maybe up a little bit there, that's a bit more like it. Okay, so we've got the positioning, maybe this bit down a touch. And remember, if you need to resize your brush to give you more control, then zoom in, resize with F. Just stick these out a little bit more and tidy up to there. That's about right, so it's not too bad. And then let's go to the detail again. Let's quickly control R and remesh and add some detail. So I'll bring this down in terms of size, dig in for the eye, for the top of the eyelids here and create a little bit of shape for the bottom there and then smooth that out. So it comes around to the side a little bit here like that. A little bit of crease at the end here, maybe sort of going out with some uh, wrinkles. Smooth this area out a little bit. Something like that. And for the eyelids, hold down control, the reverse crease, and create that eyelid shape like this, and around here like this. Crease at the end like that. A little bit of a crease in here for the tear duct. And we've got some relatively good looking eyes. Press control R to do a remesh. Obviously again, we lose a bit of detail, but then I can once again, bring that out with the reverse crease and the smooth brush as well. So a combination of crease and smooth brush. So we've got some relatively decent detail there. Before adding any more detail, I just want to sort out the brow line. So grab the grab brush, resize it, and let's pull that in a bit. A little bit of a frown maybe, something like this. Maybe coming down a bit, or depends what you want, up or down, sort of a frown or not. Push it in a little bit like that, maybe. Looks a bit frowny at the moment. <laughs> Even more of a frown now, but the lips don't look very frowny, you see, so maybe I'll just have a neutral position up like that. A little bit out this way. Tiny bit in this way. Got a little bit of a dent in that area there. Let's just zoom out to see how that's looking. That's not too bad. And you've got a sort of um, ridge type thing there for the forehead. Let's come to the front, a little bit back. Male foreheads slope backwards a little bit more than females. They go a bit more straight up. Do check out my video on the difference between male and female heads. I'll put a card in the corner and link in the description. Let's add some detail to this now. Back to the crease brush. Let's add some detail across there, sort of frown lines. Feel like a little bit more detail in here. There should be a little bit more bulk over here as well. So I might just get to the draw brush and add a bit of bulk like that and then smooth out. That's the easy way, just add a bit of bulk and then smooth it out. Something along those sort of lines, not brilliant. 
but we're getting there. Back to the crease brush. Detail across there. A little bit in here. A little bit coming down here as well. Just a little bit. Sort of a bit of a bag in this area. That's not looking too bad. Maybe some forehead, brow sort of creases. And again, you can go quite small with your brush. It'll create more detailed lines. And once again, smooth out. And that's not looking too bad. And then we can just tidy up the shape a little bit more with the grab brush, just gently editing. And you can take your time with these things. It doesn't have to be a rush. Maybe a little bit thicker lips. It's looking kind of fun. A bit more of an Adam's apple, something like that. Then you can add all sorts of detail and have some fun, whatever you see fit. These kind of go back a little bit behind the cheek. So the cheek sticks out a little bit more and that's quite fun. Okay, so the last level of detail now where we start really tidying up these shapes. So R to go to the voxel size. So something like 0 0.006 and then control R to do a remesh. Now I'm just over half a million faces now. So slower computers, you might find that a bit tough. You might want to go a little bit lower in detail, so a higher number. But now I can come in with the crease brush and really tidy the mesh up. So really refining and defining these areas. Use the smooth brush as well to smooth out, especially around the lips. I can really crease those in like this now. Maybe have a little bit of a dimple at the end there. Crease brush across here. I can add probably a little bit of bulk. So just a little bit of bulk around here with the draw brush. And again, smooth out. Let's see what that looks like. Sort of getting there. Crease brush just underneath here. Just going to crease a little bit around here, around the mouth. Maybe give them a funny double chin. Maybe something like that. You might have some more creases in this sort of area, depending on how sort of stylized you want. But I usually crease a bit and then smooth out and get it sort of how I want it with the crease brush. Reverse crease up the top here just to stick it out a little bit more. That's probably not quite right. Maybe more down this way, there we go. And then smooth out. A bit more detail around the eyelids. Reverse crease. And then smooth out where you need to. And what I'm doing is creasing, then smoothing, and creasing, and smoothing. Paint, and then smooth out a bit. Lightly smooth out. Then again, use the crease brush once more. If it goes a bit wobbly like this, you've got the grab brush. You can move in and really refine the shape if you want. A bit more crease under the eyelid. Sort of working. A bit of smoothing out there. It's looking all right. Probably a little bit more crease around here, maybe. And it might be at this point that you turn off symmetry and have a little bit of asymmetry in those points around here. And that's quite fun to do as well. And that makes it look a little bit more realistic. But do remember that you've turned it off and that you need to turn it back on for any other details you're going to do. And there we have our really fun face looking a bit weird and wonderful. In the next episode, I'll go through how you can paint your sculpts nice and easily and render them so you can show your friends. Thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.